hello Crafty Kernel fam. I am coming at you today from my office to talk about the book Babel by R.F. Kwan. Unfortunately, although this was my most anticipated release of 2022, this was a complete and utter miss for me. I was so disappointed. But first, let's talk a bit about the plot. If you Babel is a fantasy book that follows our main character, Robin, as he is orphaned, brought to England, and subsequently trained, basically, for years on end to get into Babel, which is the Translator Institute at Oxford University. This book essentially follows Robin's upbringing from the time that he is plucked from China to the time that he starts at Oxford and then really goes into the meat and depth of the story once he is at Oxford. So it follows him through all of his years of education and then some. So what I liked about this world is that the magic system is really unique. The magic system essentially centers around silver and the use of translation through the power of silver to get it to modify ordinary things. So for instance, the carts that they are getting around with have a bar of silver inlaid in them with a translation from one language to the next for speed or durability or any such word that will enhance this cart. And basically, Everything that you can think of in England has been modified with these silver bars that have these translations. And so that is where Robert and his, Robert. So that is where Robin and his cohort come in. They are plucked from their respective countries, already having knowledge of a language that is not English. They are taught, you know, English, Greek, etc., Latin, and they are forced to do these translations and create these silver bars that are capable of modifying our everyday items. The problem there being that England holds most of the resources for this and are, as I've kind of alluded to, unfairly just picking these people out of their respective nations without actually their nations having this resource as well. So. That is where the conflict of this story really picks up. Robin, along with some of his cohort members and this secret society called the Hermes Society, which is essentially made up of former babblers, is trying to redistribute the power of this silver, basically, because they are the people who hold the knowledge to make it work but their nations don't have the power that England does. So that's essentially what we're dealing with here. Sounds great. Love the concept. Really interesting magic system. Really interesting throughout the entire book. I really liked the writing. I liked the characters. I hated the pacing of this book. Oh my god. <laughs> I cannot stress to you like the night and day difference of the pacing between this and the Poppy War. Night and day. The Poppy War flew by. Like the pacing was breakneck nonstop. You were constantly in action and war and just it never seemed to have a dull moment. Whereas this book was nothing but dull moments. It was 100% predictable and dull from the like basically from the very beginning they laid out for you pretty much exactly what was going to happen and then that proceeded to happen over gosh what 500 pages <laughs> i had to slog through 500 pages to read about what was essentially alluded to from the beginning i can't do it <laughs> uh, books with pacing that is off just drive me nuts and like i said this was one of my most highly anticipated books because the poppy war was so good at pacing and because that book had everything that i loved about the writing in babel 
but also the story and the momentum to carry it through. This book really lacked any sort of momentum at all. Even the parts that were supposed to be climactic and were supposed to be like satisfying, they just lacked pacing. Oh my gosh, they were so slow. It dragged on and on and on and on and on and you could not make it go any faster and it was so frustrating. Additionally, the footnotes in this book. I don't know if you guys are footnote people or not, but I personally am not. I hate having to read footnotes. It sounded, it, it was essentially like I was reading a textbook. And I have to mention, this was told through the perspective of Robin, and it was almost as though it was being told to you after everything had ensued, um, which is fine. I don't mind like an omniscient narrator or anything. However, it just pulled me out of the story every single time that Robin made it clear that he was relaying the story to us as opposed to us reading it firsthand in his perspective. So that was frustrating. Add in the footnotes and I was just constantly being ripped away from the story, which made the pacing even worse than it already was. The pacing just got slower and slower and slower and it dragged. It took me forever to read this book because I just kept waiting. I kept waiting for it to get fast paced and interesting and for us to like jump forward in time and have it actually mean something other than the fact that we were getting closer to the the climax that we all knew was coming. <laughs> it was just, it was really frustrating. And it's even just compounded in frustration by the fact that I loved the other books so much and had really, really high expectations for this book. And I've heard other people go on about how incredible this book was. It wasn't even that this book necessarily like flopped for everyone. This book was so highly regarded, everyone loved it, and yet I just don't get it. I don't understand if people are just loving it because of the concept and the writing and the representation and all of that stuff, or if they're just slower paced people in general, maybe that's it. I'm just a really fast paced person in general. I like to be like, go, 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 let's do a thousand things and make everything happen all at once. I walk probably twice as fast as like every other person that I know. So when I read a book, <laughs> I want to be entertained. I want to be like moving at the pace of life that I am used to. And this book just wasn't it. I think that if you enjoy kind of more historical leaning fiction and a great cast of characters with really good representation again and an interesting magic system and you like to take it slow and you like to have each thing like immaculately presented to you in like a pretty little package with lots of explanation then this might be the best book for you ever um unfortunately for me it just didn't land. It did not land. And so that is why in my illustration, I drew the Tower of Babel collapsing. If you've read the end of the book, you also understand why that is. But otherwise, <laughs> there you have it. That was my review and my illustration of the book Babel by R.F. Kuang. And please let me know if you like book related content on this art channel. I do enjoy reading and I do enjoy bringing my interest in reading into this channel as much as possible and just making videos like this. So thank you guys for watching. I do really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!